Maka kira tulai, pas anak kiai chat light. From that chat light, there's no traffic light all the way on Banana Street. Now, but Makatilo Drive, no Hamlet Street, which is across from the Garden Tree. That that spot is very dangerous. We have two fatalities and I don't know how many accidents. There's a road fence down the hill, and they know there's no traffic light and very unsafe from the car one, two, and three. And kids has come up garden one or two all the way down. And plus, garden one and two trying to get out to go to the town or Safeway. It is blind because the road is curved. We've been asking traffic signal, I don't know how many years, maybe 10 years. So I don't know at this point how many people has to kill to get the traffic light. So could you go look at it and see if can be put in a traffic light? Thank you. Okay, can you ask one before we go to the community that I miss? Did you notice this at the chance of it? Um, Mr. Yoshifu, would it help you a lot if we brought out some kind of plan or a map and showed you the particular uh, places of interest that we feel is, is a danger to the community? That would be, that would be very helpful to us because it allows us to focus our attention on those Right, because this uh, Member Moses brought up uh, a fact. I mean, I have, it's been so so many years that we've been asking for that. All of the children that come to our school, Makakil, Makakil Elementary specifically, come from gardens one, two, and three. And those little ones are from kindergarten because we have no bus service. We can't even get a mile or two mile radius. But they have to negotiate all the way down to the um, to the Malala Beach or the what is it, Anki and Makakil Drive intersection. Across there, children, especially the middle school and high school, have a chance that this is where we're, we're having the kids get hit because there are no places for them to stop the flow of traffic coming down here you know, at an accelerated speed. Um, with that, the Noble Valley uh, intersection that she's talking about, Noble Valley and the Kilo Drive, which is why the telephone station, we call it a telephone substation, that is very, very dangerous because the high schoolers and middle schoolers have to cross over the attention to the bus on any being realized in the way. So again, we'll, we'll probably put out a map where you can have all the points of interest if you want. Yeah, I think one of the advantages is that you know, there are some issues right now on the you know, And so I think we have to take a, a, a holistic look at this thing as we look at what Kilo Drive as a corridor as opposed to several isolated spots along the Kilo Drive. So we look at it as a corridor issue. I think that would be very helpful. And whatever you can do us in terms of identifying those issues, we would appreciate it. Uh, based on all these issues, I think we'll have a transportation subcommittee meeting in January. We'll go to the map and go we'll and mark all these down, and then we'll be able to DTS to go over those. But I would like to mention this is, you talked about that signalized traffic crossing near Conneau Loop. If that doesn't come in, at least what should go in there is like they have a wine and all of those digitized things as you come down so you can see what your speed. People think it's a speed graph. That's not, but it sure slows you down. I know what you're talking about. I drive, I drive that uh, client on the way every Sunday. Uh, my, my, my mom is in the way high, so we usually this around Sunday night and drive the way kind of that way. And yeah, it's okay. If you come down the, down the road, you see that you flash your speed. so that our, our transportation folks can hear and so that the committee um, will know what to do.
They are planning to make that road 25 mile an hour speed limit in both directions. I, again, I really want to protest that uh, in the name of the community that it's a terrible idea. I, I don't see how we're going to go 25 mile an hour down. I don't see how anybody is going to go 25 mile an hour up. Uh, there's no schools, there's no nothing on any side of that road. It's totally out of the open. Uh, the road ought to be made so that cars can go down at, at that same speed they go down on the two drive. And, and primarily, once the cars get down the lower part of Mark Kilo Drive, they're going 40, 40 miles an hour. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make sure this is something that uh, you're involved with, but um, the lower part of Mark Kilo Drive, Mark Kilo Drive, Mark Kilo Drive, they have that strike um, in by the park area. And I was just wondering if, um, if that's been effective. I just noticed that, I don't know when it was, but about a year ago, it appeared that all these cars started getting banged on the side of the road. Not only down there, but also in the vicinity of Pollyhea Street. But um, I noticed that the striking is down down below, but between Pollyhea and Kanaha, there isn't any striking like that. And I just didn't know if, if it's working, that if that should be done something on the top, or if it's not working, then. <coughs> Thank you. 
taken off the road. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, the other thing is, um, if you need further information on this draft environmental impact statement, there's several ways you can go about uh, getting it. Um, the first way is through the internet. If you go through the website, you go to www.transit.org, and you can look at um, the report in its entirety. Um, the other way that you can go about uh, uh, getting information is you can go to the libraries so that have uh, hard copies that will be available. Um, and also, um, uh, there's if you have $59, you can get your own hard copy um, for yourself. Um, so that's the three ways that you can uh, go about doing this. Um, now, the other thing that I'd like to um, bring your attention to is um, the community meetings that we have in um, the public hearings, where you can give comments. Now, there, um, you can submit your comments at this um, public hearings on the draft environment that we've got to see. And we have, um, the first one is going to be out here, and that will be on December the 6th, um, from 9 to 11 a.m., and it will be at Kapolei House. Uh, if you're unable to make that uh, on December 8th, uh, they'll have, uh, at Aluana Public, they'll have a Blaisdell um, Center, Hawaii Suite, they'll have public hearing where you can put your comments there. Um, December 9th, it will be at Salt Lake. December 10th, it will be at White Papa. And December 11th, it will be at Colombia. So um, those are the uh, areas where you can go and make your comment. You can also uh, submit written comments to the Director of Transportation Services this year, uh, Wayne Oshioka. And we have the address as being 650 South King Street, the third floor. And you can send in the comments to the address. That's all I have. Anyone else? Anyone with any questions for the I'm really interested in this uh, reduction of cars by 23%. Um, is that based on the number of cars on the freeway today? Or is that the number of cars with the 33,000 new homes that are already zoned? That's um, based on what they anticipate. Uh, I can. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think you answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that what they're saying will happen because of the number of cars on the freeway today? Or is that what's going to happen because of the number of cars once we get the 33,000 homes that are already zoned? Or yes, that yeah, it would be the, the, uh, the homes that we anticipate that would be coming up for okay. uh, like 23. And so once we add the, these 33,000, and, I, and I, I don't know if you're familiar with the fact that we have 33,000 homes zoned, but there's another 12,000 and whole feeding that's off in the army. Is that included in that too? I think it is. Okay, so once we take the number of houses, from um, the 33,000 and, and the 12,000, add those all together, put those people on the freeway, and then we only take away one quarter, isn't the freeway traffic still heavier than it is at the present time? I think that um, the big sky system will address quite a bit of the congestion that you have. Um, and in terms of the mopping, I, 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 I can use that word, however, you know, I cannot tell you what went into the actual um, extrapolating of the, the final figure that they came out with. But I do know that uh, they um, put in all these, uh, and all these considerations are there as far as future development in terms of uh, what they Okay, I do have to say, Mr. Omar, that um, the final draft, the final EIS for OPD itself, the final one, says that once you put all this stuff together and the radio, and that you're going to still have far worse traffic on the freeway than we have today. And I, I'm not familiar with that statement. I think we need to, I need to, you know, we need to be able to nail this down. I mean, this is ridiculous. I, I, I don't need to this to respect you because I really do like it. But it's ridiculous to have, uh, you know, someone come up and say, there's going to be one 
for the best kind of economic way. When it, when it's not true, I mean, we're going to have a hell of a lot worse situations. Right. I, I wish that it, it was all nailed down to her. We're talking about apples and apples and apples and apples. Okay, and comments you can submit it if you have to this draft APIS, that's the place to do that. Anyone else? Anyone in the community?
questions to ask you. Okay, first of all, first the North South Road came to Ever Beach for an approval. Then the rail came to Ever Beach for an approval. There was a lot of process and all this kind of stuff. Now my question is to Utah, the PLA. Okay, I know a lot of people say, well, yes, they're gonna have a lot of construction workers, they're gonna have a lot of union workers, but without the PLA, because of the federal fund, our union workers will be subcontracted. Isn't that correct? Where they're not going to be paid at a union wage. Isn't that correct? Because uh, Parson Birkenoff already has his people. Isn't that correct? Can you explain that, please? I'll start by saying, no, I, I don't know that I can't explain it off the top of my head right here. It's, it's an issue that you brought up at other meetings, and I know that the department has, we've been asking the department for responses. I think because we are using federal funds and state funds, there are specific legislation both at the state and federal level in regards to requiring minimum pay and a lot of those issues. Um, Parcel Spring Crop is not going to be a contractor. That is something that um, the RFPs that the city's trying to get out to do with those sooner than later, and those are going to be construction guys. So that's where that issue is to be dealt with, not with Parcel Spring Crop. They're really just the consultant, obviously, not the construction side. So, we know the issue, and I know you've raised it with the director as well, and so we'll Is that is goes to the general fund, is that correct? It should be, if impact fees collected in that community, I think that impact fees to help that community road and, you know, score and park, and I don't think it's fair if true that general fees goes general fund. We are building house in Second City, left and right. That impact fees goes to high high. That is not fair. So I don't know that is true. So you know, I'm asking you where the impact fee goes. Is staying in our community? Thank you. Impact fee that always talks about is the transportation impact fee. So for every unit, whether it's residential or non-residential, has to pay. That money is directed to, I believe, it's six specific projects in this region. Uh, it's not to pay for North South Road, it's not to pay for top of the apartment construction, it's not to pay for Fort Meager, um, Wyoming. So it is, in fact, staying in the community. The other fees, they're not necessarily impact fees, the other fees get the sewer connection fees, those types of things. Those are not specifically allocated to the district. However, um, obviously with all this development, there's been a lot of city CIP monies put into improvements and expansions from Honolulu and the lines that need to go to there. Obviously, some of them have done other private developers as well. But on, on those fees, there's no direct um, allocation to the district. It's really just a transportation fund as a So you put fees go to the transportation um, project? The, the, like I said, the, the end of the ordinance was passed before I was on council. Uh, we list the specific projects within this region that, that those funds were allowed to be used for. They could not be used for anything else. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else before we move on? the both of you because I see you guys in action in council and you fought very hard and I, I just wish I heard this news last night when you came. Apparently you must have just known it's today. Just, just today. Okay, I'll tell the rest of the constituents on your other side that yes, we are going to airport, Royal Harbor and Hickam. And I just hope it gets done in my lifetime. Thank you, Council Chair Council. Council Member Nestor Garcia. Madam Chair, that's why I'm so glad he's the Chair. He can direct all the questions. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, given my written report, I'll stand on that. I just want to expound a little on what uh, the Chair had already mentioned. And yes, there was a meeting uh, for the City Council today. Uh, there were a couple of transportation measures uh, that were discussed and moved out of uh, the panel for further discussion. One of which 
uh, speaks to me of real project itself. And this is where it's got some attention. And this is uh, striking a balance. I think we were able to pass out a proposal that will strike a balance between uh, continued council oversight of the project and uh, having the administration proceed under the state procurement law uh, to our uh, procurement officer, who is the budget director, actually. And the question was whether or not the council could approve, disapprove, amend, change, whatever, on the specifications for whatever it is that we're actually going to um, build the facility and fix the uh, As you know, state procurement law prevents any other entity to get involved in all of the uh, technical aspects of whether it's an RFP or an invitation a bid. And so we got that in the communication from the state procurement officer itself. And so um, we were able to win the majority of the votes as of today. That we shouldn't get in the way of the project by having too much to do with uh, specifics. However, uh, we are concerned for other of my colleagues who would like to continue to see how we manage to get more oversight in this project and give the administration a line check. So please instruct me that. The second measure, as my phone is reading, I hope it's not for the comment. Um, the second measure had to do uh, Switch. 
So let's not make any snap decisions. Let's make informed decisions. Let's give the public a chance to weigh in, and then the committee will take up that matter once again. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Garcia. Okay, we'll move on. Thank you very much. Board of Water Supply, George Poole. Good evening. Um, I just have a short of brief announcements. Uh, we had no main breaks in October and November. And we have our water conservation calendar. And I'll bring it, uh, copies by next month to all of you. And, uh, you know, of course, the, the, water, the conservation calendar was composed of uh, posters when we were last year's annual water conservation poster contest. And the calendar theme is Makamai Kalei. Precious is the water. Use it wisely. So we also have the calendars available for the public in the lobby of our Veritania uh, uh, facility. So please feel free to come by and pick one up. It's also available on our website at www.portofwatersupply.com. And we just started our 31st annual poster contest with the students from kindergarten through sixth grade. And the theme is um, also, oh, I'm sorry, a new poetry contest students for students in grades 7 through 12. I think the whole contest is full of eco play. Water gives life. And deadlines to enter these contests is Wednesday, March 11th, 2009. And um, so that's all I have to announce. I just last thing to say uh, uh, very safe and happy holiday season on behalf of the board was any questions and comments. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, I also want to direct you to the correspondence we received. And to be a little bit more specific about what the word really is and what it is. Oh, I'll give you a copy. It's a standard asking for a, a liquor license for a restaurant that's going to be opening in the village at Fulmina. Okay, so it's going to be a restaurant? Yes. Would they like some kind of support from us or? No, it's, it's just a notice of information. We, we could have put it in, it, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be um, said in public. It, it's a pretty standard form. But if, if you would like to um, do that, we, we can. Well, I, I, I think that uh, you know, we need to keep that place moving and uh, I don't think they can do it without the license. And uh, I don't see any objection to having a bigger license there. I would like to support it. Okay. So why don't you do it in a formal motion? I, uh, I'd like to move that we support the liquor license in the, the restaurant in the buildings at uh, um, Okay, is there a second? second? Okay, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Okay, we will go on record that we support this uh, this liquor license in the villas of Fort William. Okay, and I want to direct you to another piece of correspondence that we have from the Kapolei Common Civic Club regarding the racetrack and they will now, um, they, they will now work with the racetrack folks, the old racetrack in Kalaima. Okay, now this is okay. I cannot go without commenting on this letter. After okay. three consecutive adamant opposition to this raceway, we have a fourth that says that they're, although they believe that a racetrack is not compatible, they are willing to work with Tokyo LLC. Uh, and as much as this letter was sent to Mike we also received another letter from Guacamole. Foundation, which is another Hawaiian civic group on the opposite side of the fence. No, I, I have a copy and I'll hand it out. Um, they are in total opposition. And who, who did they address that letter to? That was a sent out to HCDA, oh. and we received copies of that. So just for the record, if we're bringing this one up, I thought it would only be fair to bring them up. Yeah, the only reason I brought it up is because it Okay, thank you very much for your comments. All right, we will move forward. Our next 15-minute uh, board presentation, we finally, and we thank our, our Ubrin Haramoto from our Board of Education, and we've had questions about different company facilities. Uh, schools have always been uh, something close and dear to this community, so we'll be here talking tonight about the company facilities and the funding. Thank you for being with us tonight, Green. Good evening, thank you for having us here. I'm Green Hardo, Board of Education, New Edition Member. Uh, yes, uh, several months ago, I guess to address the ongoing concerns the board and the community can regarding the Department of Education school facilities in this area. Of course, the concerns about all the development in this area. Uh, we have a presentation prepared tonight for you. We have with us the Assistant Superintendent who is responsible for all facilities, um, Mr. Randy Ward, Assistant Superintendent. He will do the presentation for them. We have um, the slides here. And the community members, we have some handouts here. Um, if you need one, I have some extras. Actually, before we get into that, I see someone else I'd like to introduce. Uh, this is the Complex Area Superintendent for this area. He is in charge of all schools in Papale and Pella. Uh, he's been on the job for four months. So I thought it was important to introduce him to the board as well as the community so you know who he is. Um, I'd like to introduce to you Bernie. Good evening everyone. Um, I'm Chair. I'm sort of young. Um, I'm excited to be back in the Edwa and Kapolei and Mountain Hill area. I was out here some years ago. I was the vice principal at Kennedy High School. We had all the children from Mountain Hill, from Mountain Hill, and boy, this place is really 
we grow. Um, fortunately, it's nice to be in this cafeteria. Um, we'll have the opportunity to help plan the school along with our representative Moses back there and Senator Kama. Um, I think we have a lot of good things going on in the schools. And there's a lot of good things going on in the community. A lot of challenges as listening to all the things that are coming up this evening. Um, I've been in the Department of Education for about 26 years now. And uh, all time flies. And I've worked out in the legal area for about 14 years. So it's been so for a while. I was principal at Tamoilani Elementary School in uh, uh, the Gentry area. Um, I was uh, in charge of the legal district of personnel people. I did uh, that work for a while. I went back to the school. I was in town at Kitty Elementary School. And um, took out this position as a commentary superintendent. So um, I'm happy to be part of the community and um, hope to work all of you so from the soon. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Bernie. So again, he is in charge of all schools in this area, so um, there's a lot of good things going on, but should we have any concerns? Um, you know, first, go to your son or daughter's principal, a teacher and principal, if they can't resolve it, then Mr. Young is the person who would be next in line to address your concerns. So that's one of the reasons I thought that we should know who he is. Uh, and then, uh, now on to our presentation. So, Thank you, Mr. I have a few days to hand out, and I will run through it. The overall school facility needs is the title of the name. The order of the presentation is to start on the top left, you go down the left hand side, you go to the top right, you go down the right hand side. So, uh, slide number two is a little number down the right hand corner that tells you what slide it is. Slide number two, I call public school infrastructure issues. Public schools are really part of public infrastructure, like roads, airports, highways, transit systems, sewer systems, water systems, drainage systems, uh, libraries, universities, community college. All of these are public infrastructure. In the area of public schools, I have six bullets there. We need new schools, we need facilities at existing schools, we need periodically to rehab. What have we got? We need ongoing repair and maintenance. Uh, there are air conditioning expectations, and the question is where does the money for all this come from? The need for new schools, even though the department's uh, enrollment is trending down very slightly, we go down something less than a percent a year, but there's been a long term downward trend in total enrollment. Uh, despite that, we have a need for new schools, and obviously, you're in one of those areas, Central Oahu is another. Maui and the Big Island are all growing in the student population. Uh, if you look at the slide before, four schools planned for Central Oahu. We, this data comes from our six-year capital improvement project uh, request that goes to the legislature uh, later this month. Uh, and the year there is the year that we expect it to open, assuming two things. One is funds are provided, three things. Funds are provided funds are released, and the third is that they're actually the demand for it materializes. These projections are based on uh, developers' expectations, and uh, developers in times are good, think the times are good forever. In times are bad, they think times are good bad forever. So the thing that we can be most certain of is that these dates are likely not to be yet either they're too ambitious or they're not ambitious enough. Uh, so I have a slide in the middle of the way of the new schools plan for the river of This is not an exhaustive list. It's only those schools that we would begin within the next six years. There are more beyond that based on developers' plans on the hills, for example. Uh, but you can see a list of eight favorite schools planned in the next uh, eight years. So we have Uh, the bottom, bottom right are the new schools needed on Maui. If you turn the page over to page two, one new 
the school plan on the big island and it's not planned. The summary of all the schools is $1.4 billion. Dollars. Next slide, I mean, that number eight on the middle of the, the left-hand side. Major new facilities needed in existing schools. And this is in the three-year time period. We are currently in, plus the state fiscal line, and that begins next July 1. Uh, group by islands, you can see for this area, new classroom buildings planned at Campbell High School. Uh, slide number nine, bottom, bottom left, uh, uh, Smalley County. Slide number 10, top right is Hawaii County. And the middle slide number 11 on the right is the summary of uh, new facilities needed within the next three years, counting this one, $138 million. Bottom slide on, on this page there on the right hand side, the need for periodic rehabilitation of the existing facilities. We're just finishing a program that began right after 9-11. Special session authorized the, uh, we call it the, the whole school renovation, or the renovation of classrooms on all schools in the state more than the time 25 years old. We're just now finishing it eight years later, probably we'll finish it in, in, uh, at the end of nine years. Uh, the current per classroom cost of that is about $50,000. This is work that, because it was wanted to get accelerated so it was not in the building, so it's largely automatic. The floors, the windows, the place blackboards, the chalkboards, the paint, uh, but no plumbing, no electrical, no structural work. Uh, while this work was needed, it is definitely not the end of the work we need to be in the facility. So uh, the bottom part of it talks about rehabilitation. 50 year cycle of basically trying to build it and uh, re rebuilding it to the current quality. And I think we'll want to go as long as it's not a little bit of the electrical cycle, the electrical and significant repair of the classroom and then the other buildings. So I hope we still have to remember that. Assuming we rehab all of our buildings on a 50 year cycle. And it costs a lot of hundred dollars this work, but it is significantly less than the cost of the building. Now we have about 45 million square feet of building across the state, and we can spend many, many dollars a year in perpetuity rehabilitating our existing facilities. If you go to page three, the top to left uh, addresses unknown repair and maintenance and land improvements. And best practice is by forcing the business of maintaining. So is we've got a budget between 2 and 4% of the year of facility replacement costs for example maintenance <coughs> to the routine stuff as well as the periodic remove the paint uh, kind of work. And the replacement cost of all of the is about $5 billion. Dollars.
provide air conditioning and everything in the next 10 years. That's a 150 million a year. Total of 175 million. Over to the top, uh, right hand side, number 16. Uh, it gives you the five year average of state funding for all of these activities. Construction, reconstruction, repair, and maintenance. Uh, 278 million on average. And then the, the bottom slide is uh, where does it all come from? 278 million is the average of state funding over the last five years. There's a question for you about impact fees. And there's a, a state level school impact fee just connected by the legislature in 2007 intended to provide new developments. All of the land and about 10% of the building costs for the schools. So if we say the developers will provide 10% of the government for 40 million a year, that's 14 million a year that comes from the development community bringing the subtotal that of funding to 292 million and 8575 million. Now the gap, which comes out of higher taxes, nobody wants, higher fees, nobody wants, lower expectation, nobody likes. So that's, that's the situation that the department is in. And it really is a, the whole community and this infrastructure issue of expectations and desires succeeding the willingness for the, uh, the willingness to uh, to pay for it. On the core view, I'm going to put the, the leeward new school needs into some perspective to say, Everybody would like all this to happen, but um, it's really a whole state to be able to make a challenge. I just want to share that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, let's start with this side of the room. Anyone has any questions? No, this is not. It says here that the homeowner developers are putting 10% of the um, the revenues for the schools. Is, is this in addition to the land that they only would allocate for the, for the uh, school site? Yes. It's in addition to that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Maybe you have another one, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lord, for coming tonight. Uh, you know, slide number five. Uh, the new schools for the, this particular area. Um, each year, we don't get, I guess, appropriations or approvals. How long more does it um, push down? The, if you were to get this calculated to the elementary slated for 2012, if each year that they don't act, does it keep on going down? And does it keep on, is it subject to a rearrangement that of priorities? Every year that the money isn't appropriated is a, another year that isn't built. So there's a, there's a year for year correspondence there. But every year we revisit the, the, the list and say the circumstances change that would cause us to need to accelerate the development or can we let it slip up. Does, is, is the funding or the pool of funding um, drive this on year one, or is it happened like planning and design and two years out, or you know, this is like six years right now, or and plus? But when does the funding need to start really to initiate the push it? Typically, we ask for the funds in two, two pieces. The first piece, roughly ten percent. So 
for a job that's going to be somewhere in the 60 dollar range. Uh, but because the, the cost of escalator, we expect to go to life with a subsidy to build a little bit of a cheap basis. I have a question. Have, you know, you talked about how schools were built before and how they need air and such. How much work or investigation has been done of doing more of a Greek type school where you don't need air conditioning? I know that state schools do not build build their schools in a green um, thinking and they are not air conditioned and those schools are not hot. So do we even look at that?
for example, a federal high school at one time had 3,000 students, and now it's 800. Uh, Pacific Palisades Elementary School at one time had 1,500 students, and now it's 400. So when we design schools, we design them for, we do not design them for a pink one. We design them for what we think a stable world will be. And this, the campuses are designed to add portables to take care of them. So we would rather spend a quarter of the money on a 25-year classroom and 100% of the money on a 50-year classroom that you only need for 25 years. So, the most recent school that we opened was Dale uh, Eagle Elementary, and immediately we started adding portables. That was planned. So people look at that and say, didn't you plan for the enrollment? The answer is yes, we did plan for the enrollment, but we planned for the enrollment to be needed for less than the life of the permanent building. Okay, just one last so we can let others ask. I understand uh, what you're saying. Uh, you know, you project the number. And I have a problem with the, your projection, how you count the ratio for each house. Each household, you point, you, you have counted 1.5 per student, each house. My, I have four children. There's one. Second one is you talking about multi track. Middle line has multi track. They file and they have another high school. So we uh, we are same as middle line. Even even though this school built as a multi track, we need another high school. I hope you reconsider it because coming out of the house left and right. This house, this school is not going to support all the whole is coming in the Kapolei and Makakiro. Thank you. I know it's controversial and there's the activity in that, but are they factoring in the schools that you do close? Are you going to sell those off and be able to use the funds from there to help build the new schools? Those, the, uh, schools are most of the schools are on state of the land. A number of them are on city, city land, and others are on federal land. So if we were to close the school and say it's no longer needed for educational purposes, it goes back to the state land, it goes back to the Department of Land Natural Resources. It's not owned by the Department of Education. So we do not, if the, if the DLNR decided in its wisdom to land with all due respect, are you telling us that the DOE purposely goes ahead and supports a school that is overcrowded from day one, especially when it's in a community such as ours? Because the norm would be about 700 for an elementary school. Here in Kapolei, within the first year, that school was overcrowded. Our middle schools are overcrowded. Our elementary schools are overcrowded. Are we just to wait till the peak is bypassed and then now we go on the slide so that there's enough children that are not cramped? The facilities are not designed to be overcrowded. They are designed to accommodate accommodate the student body, but not all of the student body will be accommodated. This is why we've said this when we did the charrettes for the middle school, the elementary school, and the high school. Your ratio of one point, I think they did different in Moses, I think it's 1.25 per household. In a community such as this, which is not a retirement community, that shoots everything out the window. Um, and I can understand you've got like the quality high schools that are now not needed because the population is being uh, older. So you've had the, the attrition, all those children are long gone. But then we have communities such as ours, and we're bursting at the seams, and we're just supposed to wait till we hit the peak and come down. I don't see that happening in the next 20 years. Actually, the enrollment at Public Post School is 
But they were bursting at the seams. Now they're just bulging at the seams. Again, well, with all the reasons. Could you clarify the issues to the numbers? And
but not on YouTube yeah. on its own. Well, you may find that the yes. school getting overcrowded. The, the still measure for the term household not is, I don't know, if it's 1.25 or 1.5. Then, I asked the superintendent to do the yeah. survey. Each kid goes to public school to see how many household, how many kids in that household. Then you have some idea instead of we are telling you we are a big number, you have data to support and how we are going to fit all these kids with the coming, all the development coming in. So, uh, you know, I will eat one time. Uh, Mr. Gordon Young can maybe do the in. survey but I forgot in my My ID and password. Yeah. You can have it reset and the mail it to your original address. But I don't even remember what my yeah, but you username was. Yeah, but you, but you have to give them uh, a secondary email address. So you do that. I didn't. You know what they might be? You do. And a lot of the schools are those that are not in here. Those children have the option of coming here. Just trying. Do they not? Because they don't need to click the little thing that says they're not my password. But that's where I see the difficulties coming in. And on top of that, we have this this rise in our population where a number of families are just doing a collaboration of mixed families in one household. Now you've got lots of them in one house because they can't afford, and they certainly don't want to go to the beach, and I don't think much anybody to do that. But that again equates the population of our schools. And that 1.25 or 1.1 1 and a half kid, nobody has a half a kid. So I, I think, you know, and we've spoke about this many, many times with um, the model, and we'll probably talk with Bernie too, with Green and, and yourself. But we just don't think it's equitable, not here, not now. So I guess the question is, what um, what can we do? And now that you've heard the concerns, because the bottom line is, we feel that you're working in an old world with old data, with old thinking, in comparing us with this with this city who has changed so much and with uh, added population. So what can you come back um, to tell us? You know, what, what is the result of what we're saying to you? What are you going to do? Uh, what I'm going to do is just looking at the three companies going to the school. I'm just going to look at the two hours of life. And I'm going to look at the projection of the story. And they just had two 
new students come into the class, they didn't have enough chairs. I had to go ahead and take a chair off the computer section to give that student a place to see. How warm and welcoming is that to our community? How warm and welcoming is that to a new student? I think you need to go back and you need to look at your figures from Makalani. Makalani started out needing something like 13 or 14 classrooms. That date and their spot on the list because it wasn't done in the year, it kept going down. By the end of, and every year that it goes down, okay, it comes from the Okay, well, thank you. Both of you, I challenge you, you get into those schools. You for yourself go in. And this has been said at some of the Board of Education meetings. These people are making up these lists. And thank you, Ms. Hillary, your time's up. Okay, next please. Sorry folks, we only can give you the... Three things. Number one, I like to make a recommendation to the minutes. And it will connect to the board committee, subcommittee, and it will ensure the school board pledge that they will send the kids to a public school. Number one. Number two.
Where's the leverage? You could all have the Please summarize your time. Do you now. expect children to learn who must have food, nourish the brain, body, and soul? So has that changed? The state says your each time child is up. at the age of six must be registered in school. Private or public, or has that changed? Is that why people who live in Honolulu can afford to send their children to private schools or homeschool, and that's why the schools are spacious? Miss Grace, your time is oh, up. Please respect this board. Your, your time is up. If you can give us, or you can make many copies. And folks, we have the agenda, and we ask that you respect this board on how we operate, and we most um, certainly would like to hear you. And please follow the rules so that everyone, and we can get through this agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Is it on? Okay. I was just wondering, uh, you were close, if all the neighborhood boards could get together on education. Um, number one, we need our um, public schools to be at least college prep from grade school. That way, because of the economy, we don't have to send our kids to private school and they can get the education that they need. Um, number two, as far as air conditioning, maybe we should stress our state or the developers if they want air conditioning in the school. I know they have to put solar panels up for the water, put the solar panels up for the AC in the school as well. Um, number three, um, all the schools that I see here is um, pre-developed schools for pre-development in those particular areas. I understand that these are tools that the, the um, developers are going to use to sell their homes. But they have to, if we can all get together, because there's a lot of homework that, we need, that needs to be done to improve our community, because the amount of homes that they're going to be building, this school will not hold all the students. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, college prep is very important. Thank you. Did anyone else before we... Okay, anyone please come forward? One minute, please. Um, as an early childhood educator, I don't trust our school system to take my children. What you're offering the children that I care for every day is not enough. So if I could keep all of them, I would. But I fear for the, the future of these children because you're not educating them. You're not giving them what they need. And guess what? They're, they're going into our communities and tagging things. They're going into our communities and breaking into our homes and stealing our cars. And it's not just the parents' responsibility. It's also our state's responsibility to educate these children and give them what they need so they're not doing these horrible things to the rest of our community. And again, I will trust you. And I will, I will tell every one of my parents and encourage them even active duty to get two or three jobs so they can send them to private school so I don't have to give them to you. Okay, anyone else who wants to come forward? I understand that all the budget cuts that the state has of your civil proposals that we need to try to leave the budget short. Um, one of the issues was the increase of the ratio of student to teacher. Uh, the other one was to have the, have the teachers work free for a couple of days. That's a new one. <laughs> that is all maybe was to work free, um, you know, right now. So, what has come out of that? That was the biggest thing. <laughs> Interesting. Actually, uh, I did want to talk about the budget issues and the school closures, but I'll do that at the next meeting since we, we took up too much of our time already. But I'll just answer that question the best I can. Uh, what you read in the newspapers um, really was a starting point of discussing, discussing many different options. Uh, I call it just a sampling of possible alternatives. I think it's due diligence that we look at uh, many different options because we our sense is that the state's budget situation will not get any better, and it will probably get a lot worse. So we're starting this thought process about if we are uh, forced to make more cuts, major cuts, 
what can we do? And I really need to take my hands off to Superintendent Tomorrow and her staff for thinking out of the box, coming up with these other alternatives, and I say sampling alternatives because there's hundreds of different alternatives that we can look at. But it's just starting the thought process on what might be possible, what might be feasible. It's not to say that superintendent says that this is what she recommends. Uh, I think I need to make that clear. It's not a recommendation, but it is just some alternative that we need to start looking at. And we do understand the challenges with some of those, as you mentioned. Is it legal? Is there any way for us to force teachers to vote in time? Is it something that the unions will agree to? Cutting hours, whatever. Uh, so we understand those challenges, but I think the important thing to understand is we need to start looking at many alternatives. If we wait until the state's budget gets so bad that we need to make cuts, it's kind of too late for us to start thinking about what might we need to say. Thank you. Oh, okay, good. We're, we're going to move on. Thank you so very much. We have 25 minutes left. Thank you, and um, especially for taking out of the bullets tonight. And we will be in touch. And uh, I think it was a very hearty um, discussion that needed to be said. So thank you again, and, and we'll talk with you soon. Okay. All right. We're gonna. I would like at this time to call up uh, Henry A. Councilmember Nancy Garcia and Tom Cook. But Henry, if you will first come up. Madam Chair, members of the uh, neighborhood board, members of the community, I'd like to do a very quick overview about the uh, development plan to provide the uh, setting for community input. At the present time, there are four ways in which testimony can be submitted. One is by mail to our office, 650 South King Street, 7th floor, Department of Planning and Permitting. Second is by email to Bob Stanfield, that's bstanfield at honolulu.gov. Third is by a fax, 768-6743. And fourth is by voicemail, which is Bob Stanfield's telephone, at 768-8051. Uh, after the January 30 deadline for our receiving comments, the committee can continue to submit comments to the Planning Commission and ultimately to the City Council. So we believe there are adequate opportunities to submit the testimony. Uh, the development plan itself deals with an assessment of the plan vision, the land use, the infrastructure policies, and implementing methods, a determination as to whether they're still appropriate. The plan also uh, has preliminary findings with regard to key elements of the existing plan. These include protecting agricultural land and open space, developing the secondary urban center, building master plan communities, and protecting natural, historic, and cultural resources. In connection with the assessment, the number of changes are being recommended. These include supporting placemaking, improving connectivity, finance infrastructure through tax increment financing, revising the plan to reflect some plans at Kalailoa, plans for DHHL, new plans for the University of Hawaii West Oahu, and uh, some of the road improvements, a movie studio in Kapolei, and the large development that's being proposed by the in connection with these changes, the plan also makes recommendations for the City Council to consider as to how the uh, actions that could be taken to implement uh, these new changes that are being proposed. Uh, all of the information that I discussed with you is available on our website, http colon backslash backslash honoluludpd.org slash planning slash eva slash eva five year slash public review draft slash ever dp draft page that pdf. Uh, this concludes my presentation. That would be a real quick. Oh, okay, thank you. So um, at this point, this board isn't taking any of your comments. So anyone from the community that's going to come forward, it is in a discussion. If you want to make your, your comment, um, know that it may not necessarily get to 
um, the department unless you do it in the manner that you so requested it. Is that correct? Uh, I think some of the comments are going to be fairly uh, pointed and passionate. Okay. I would suggest that the person making those comments take advantage of one of the four ways of submitting and just make sure that it gets to us, to our staff, exactly as they want to have it reviewed. I made this quote and I wouldn't want to do that, especially since uh, this is my last meeting. <laughs> okay, but it's better, it's easier for us to blame you because you're not. Oh, okay, so let's start with the board members, one minute. Um, let's start over here on the side. Hey, can we get? Start this time, anybody here? No? Oh, okay, we're, we're gonna... Okay, um, but we're gonna go to the community. Anybody in the community, come forward, say your name, tell us where you're from. Good evening, good evening, Madam Chair of the Board, um, and community as well. My name is Glenn Romulo from Echo Beach. I'm here, I'm here this evening to talk about the Neville Development Plan. But first of all, I want to wish uh, Henry Ng, a good friend of mine, a uh, good retirement and happy retirement. Henry. Uh, <clears throat> um, the Ever Development Plan is a, is, a, is a people vision. The plan was devised uh, with, with community input, and it was a long and continuous uh, debate with the community. People from Edo Beach, people from Monte Kilo, people from down the coast as well as that's the central area, and it's 10 years late on review. So it's gone through two five-year cycles and has never been reviewed by the public. So this is the time that we've got to come together. This is our vision for, not only for our communities, but also for the Eva Plains and the Eva region. So we've been having, we've been engaging in, in Eva Beach, we've been engaging in, in our own community meeting, but we want to expand it to include uh, the people from Mata Kilo and as well as uh, the Mata Kilo board. Okay, please wrap up your time. So, so we've been having a meeting and we invite, we're coordinating with our, our people from our board to let's sit down and discuss the EVA development plans. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else come forward? Yes, good evening. I'm, uh, my name is Ken Warren. I'm from Capitol. I'd like to uh, just make some very quick comments about uh, Ask the board and our representatives to please very carefully consider uh, the development plan because I think it's very obvious in the communities that the, the problems of Edo Beach affect everyone in the South Island, through Capital A, Mount Kilo. Congestion, anyone that drives from Capital A to work knows that the overflows all the way up to the uh, off ramps. A representative, Chairman Marco Pine, District 43, Edo Beach. Uh, Representative Pine has provided an eight page synopsis of the Health Development Plan draft. And each board member has a copy, or extra copies for the audience. Uh, there is the availability to contact me at this board meeting to provide questions back to Representative Pine. However, I'd just like to extrapolate out of this eight page synopsis one of the most uh, important issues is the East West Connected Road that would link up the community of Kapolei and at the beach with the North South Road corridor being connected to the Fort Weaver Road corridor. And at this time, the federal development plan does not address a timeline in which the unilateral agreement, if it were to be reclassified for old Peely from agricultural to urban by the Land Use Commission, when that east-west connected road would be available for public use. Representative Pine feels that being together as Coppola and other communities bring this east-west connected road to a priority and unite. So with that said, uh, Chair, thank you so much for the availability to provide comments. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Please come forward. Hi, I'm Daniel Swanson, from Mocky Kilo. I've been here about a dozen years and I've noticed, and as everyone has, the impact on all the development that's gone on. And I hope that the, uh, re the revision of the draft plan will exclude uh, that area between here and uh, Ever Plain, uh, which might be uh, 12,000 new homes for uh, the development of Kofo Pili. Uh, if we can keep that land as agricultural, and uh, the potential of, of a uh, wind farm, maybe a uh, photovoltaic uh, energy farm, we can uh, 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 be moving ourselves into new, a new paradigm of uh, 
keeping our food production close by and, uh, and, and lessening our traffic flows that we are already, already <laughs> with Bob on a daily basis here. So thank you for uh, Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Please come forward. Please come forward, anyone else, so that we can move this along and we can hear everyone. Good evening, Madam Chair. My name is Gary Batista, and I have been two residents, but I have a very just residents. And um, commenting on this EDP, that uh, they get the call to come in after 12 years to say, review this and give us comments by November 17th. Then they change their mind and say, January 17th. Then they change their mind and say, June 30th. How oh, has it been that they take 12 years and ask us to give them comments within less than 90 days? I am asking that the powers to be extended at least one half of 1% of the time that they took to put this together. They took 12 years, and all I'm asking is that they extend it to May 31st, which is six months, which is one, one half of 1% of the time that they took. There are many issues that need to be... Thank you, please wrap up. Your time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else, please come forward. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the Copyright Board. My name is Scott Belford. I uh, thought I'd come by and just bring up one point with respect to the uh, development plan. Um, I'm someone who takes a pretty keen interest in the role of technology in telecommuting uh, when it comes to economic development. And I would hope that uh, future development in the other plane includes fiber to the premise and uh, within your neutral community owned fiber network. And I realize this is kind of an extreme statement for the next five or ten years. I remember that I said this, and I can be a service to this board or anyone else in understanding the intense economic development and education opportunities at your service. Thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, please move, come forward. If not, we're going to. Uh, um, any, anyone else? You have your minute? Go ahead, minute, buddy.
lost it. If we remember to leave, I'll give you 30 seconds, and, and that's it. Your time is up. Um, you're bringing up an issue that's brand new, and it may be worthy of discussion, but you, you can't add a, another date. But um, you, you'll have 30 seconds, and that's it. Okay. All right. Now, the problem is that there is only so much A and B fine agricultural land on this island. And as you can see, a large part of it is exactly where whole PD is going to go. Now you can also see that an awful lot more of it was up here where we've already lost at the prime land to Mililani Town. We've already lost it to Waipio Gentry. We've already lost it to Waikele. We've already lost it to uh, uh, Village Park and to Royal Kenia. Now we've got to hold on to this prime, prime land. What are we going to do in the future if the seas rise and, and we can't, uh, and, and our uh, tourist industry is destroyed and we can't get boats in for any food? What are we going to do in the future if we have another economic crisis like we, like we just had, where airlines falter and it's okay, not a lot of great things in? So that's why. Okay, and, and what you should do is you should put Put it in writing so that you can distribute it to the rest of the board. Oh, Madam yeah. Chair, I did put it in writing and I sent it to you. Okay. Now, this is what, okay. what the, the chair had to what I'm just saying to you if you want to do it at the beginning. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, excuse me, but uh, tonight we, we spent now uh, two hours, three hours almost, you know, uh, trying to get down to this point. Everybody got a chance to really speak and to talk about the things that they thought were really important. And, and, you know, and they had their minute. And, and everybody had their minute. But nobody, I mean, we're, we're down to the other development plan. This is a tremendously important thing. And Henry King got up and talked for three minutes or so. And that's yes. what we see the presentation. Why can't we have some presentation on the problem? Member Dudley, we are following the agenda. This agenda was done properly. You had over a month and a half. This is the way it is, and we're following the agenda, and we're, we're going to move on. You have more than your time of one minute. And so we, we will move on. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Like make a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to, I, I move for a resolution from this board that all land within the territory covered by the other development plan that is currently in agriculture be permanently kept in agriculture. That's a motion. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, there is no interest in any second on this board. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, Madam Chair, like we will move on, Mr. Dudley. Your, your, your time is. Point of order. Okay. Point of order. Point of order. Now, I'd like to make a motion. I move for a resolution from this board that the wording in the EVA development plan under general policy, transportation system functions, which is not on page 4, dash 12, paragraph 1, line 3, we change from should to shall. Now this section has three subheadings, and connecting the line 3 to the third subheading, this sentence then would read, the sentence then would read, its transportation system shall provide adequate capacity for major peak hour community to work in the primary urban center. This, of course, would put into the urban development plan that we are guaranteed adequate capacity in the freeway during the prime morning hour getting into the city. I'd like to second on that. Okay, there's no second. Wait, we're going to move on, and you can put this in writing. That's and, right, I'm right. Okay, then you, you need to turn it over to Henry. I just have a like to call Madam Council Chair Tyler Polk, if you could please come up. You're out of order, and we're going to move on next. Thank you, Chair Tyler Point of order. Point of order. I believe, Madam Chair, that uh, the motion on the floor has received. There's no second, we're going to move forward. There's a new motion, man. As the public can weigh in, Gioni. As the public can weigh in. Please. You're watching. Please. You need to respect the 
process of what's happening here. I, I yes, yes, and I'd like to make a motion. Can you all are for in that audience? I'd like to make another motion. Can you, may I have a for a moment? Yes. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's necessary that this neighborhood board have either a special meeting or have it reviewed again at a more appropriate time. Because this is too much information. I mean, for me, I understand it. But we all expect constituents out there to have this set. Because I'll tell you, for the people at home, really, the university people, or whatever is developing in our community, it just doesn't make them look very well. We need to hear what is being planned. Why, why certain people have certain opinions about boundaries or whatever. And what the ramifications of us getting involved in is at this particular time. So well, I'm just saying that we are against it, mm -hmm. but I think we're just not informed enough, but we owe it to the yes. to come back and to In it. all fairness, this is a brand new issue, uh, and this board isn't ready to discuss it or to make a um, oh, an opinion at this time, and you can go ahead and, and do this big writing, and we're going to move forward. I agree with you, but at this point, you're still about to, you came up, could you please be well, seated? You, you, you had to do that. I just mentioned in my uh, comments that if you guys could sit down, you had to because you weren't apprised of the yes. 10 years And it's being discussed, Mr. Mel, no, no, please sit down. You are out of order, sit down. Sit down. We can get the community, we can have a meet, so we can all discuss the development plan.
the title of this has been short for you. We talked about this last time. So the only other note I want to have is, as you guys go through your discussions, if you find an additional time to be in, I am open to trying to help push that discussion with the department. I think they'll be open for this well. Make sure you guys have enough time to get through that process. If it can be done within the existing time frame, I think that's going to be a deal. No one, the, the, this is the later longer than necessary, but I want to leave that option open. But that's going to come, but like everyone also said, that's going to come from the board. It can't be individuals requesting that because that's the purpose of this board and the process that needs to be done. Okay, thank you. Customer Garcia? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to just take away the sentiments of uh, Council Chair, remember that the two of us represent the uh, region. And if the leadership continues to hold, as we hope it will, uh, we'll be in a position to continue this discussion and make sure that the discussion does continue uh, at the community level as well as in the, uh, in the halls of government. You have to understand this is just the first step, of a very long process. So. Uh, if you feel like you're not getting all of your comments heard and the discussion is just not enough time to weigh in, understand that there are other processes where you can also weigh in on uh, whatever it is that's specific about what will happen in this region. Uh, of course, uh, with respect to those who are going to be developing Mokili, for instance, if you still need to go to the State Finance Commission, it will be a reclassification. Uh, and the EVA development plan will come before the City Council. Zoning committee, which I am a member of, but I still will be uh, when the new year comes around. So there will be ample opportunities to continue to weigh in, and the city council, the city council can make amendments to the development plan when it comes to us. So don't think that this is a done deal now. I, I, I understand the concerns that are raised by Member Dudley here. There's a legitimate concern that needs to be addressed by a constituency that has concerns. Uh, as they see it, with regard to development and infrastructure. So, uh, the discussion could not be brought up in full tonight. I understand we have an agenda, we can follow that agenda, Madam Chair. But understand this, though. You people will have an opportunity, everybody will have an opportunity to weigh in on this. There's still a process. And I can assure you that that process will continue, your voice will be heard, and we have to. We can bring a committee discussion, a city council discussion right here to your doorstep at your time. And you are available, so you can weigh in. This is important to me and Todd now. And at this point, we want the committee to weigh in and let it be a grassroots discussion. So we're not going to interject what we would like to see done in the development plan at this point. This is not top down discussion here. This is bottom up. Let's we'll start with the grassroots. Start with you, we'll get you in to make sure that happens. Okay, thank you, Council Member Garcia. Okay, well, we're going to move on. Madam Chair, I, I just want to say one other thing. We have got mm -hmm. as board members to read this damn thing. Read it. Read it. We're, we'll move on. Okay, we have only 15 minutes left. I saw Pat Bolta here. Pat, do you have anything that you want to say in, in your two or three minutes' time? Because if there's no objections, I'm going to let Pat say what he needs to say because no one else is here. Um, and then we'll have our legislators come up and talk about their package. Yes, she, she will be with the legislative folks. Aloha kato. Good evening, Chair Nixon and board members. Um, Chairman Michael Connie wishes to uh, express his uh, happy holidays to you and uh, Send you with this wishes for the coming year. Uh, it's a short report. Uh, this coming Saturday here at this facility, uh, we will be signing leases to 205 uh, authorities uh, that we did in October for our public subdivision uh, 2. And the following Saturday, on the 13th, uh, we will be having our LSE select lots. First hundred lots to our upway, east upway one subdivision, which is being built right now, right there. So that's what's happening in the next couple of weeks. Any questions? And how many homes is that? Uh, Two hundred and four hundred homes in east upway one, which is being constructed right across the corner of the building. The first hundred homes will be selecting lots uh, in two weeks, and then, as I said, two hundred five LCs. This coming Saturday, and that's for uh, East Coast 2, which is on the east side of 
And if we have time, then we'll open it up for questions. Representative Clark. Congratulations. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. Good evening. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen you, so happy holidays to all of you. Uh, before I begin, uh, Madam Chair, I just want to thank all of uh, those who supported me in this past election. I also want to thank my opponent, Mr. Lee Hall, for providing the voters with a choice in this past election. And to those of you who did not vote for me in this past election or are new to this area, um, I just hope to have the opportunity to meet with you now uh, soon, and I hope to earn your support over the next two years. Uh, very quickly, um, I have been named again to the Finance Committee. Um, we are looking at a $1.2 billion shortfall. It is probably one of the worst financial times. Um, after 9-11, the state was only looking at a $600 million shortfall. So we're looking at $1.2 billion that we have to try to make up over the next two years. It's going to be a very tough legislative session. Um, and I think as a result, many of the bills that we're looking at are going to have problems. Uh, just to give you a quick overview of how the system works, we deal, we have a constitutional mandate to balance, to submit a balanced budget. And if there's any money, in fact, left over, that can we go to bills. And any legislation that has an impact on the state economy, on the state budget, or has a fiscal impact, will then get appropriations. It's going to be, uh, the word has come down from leadership that uh, we should not expect any bills to be funded because, in fact, there is no money. So, um, it may be, and I, I say that, you know, I try to be positive about that, and I know that sounds dismal, but that's the reality of the situation that we're looking at right now. I've also been named Vice Chair of Water, Land, and Ocean Resources uh, due to my background in land use, and so um, I think some of these issues that have been discussed tonight will be coming before our committee. Finally, I'll be serving as a member of Energy and Environmental Protection as well as the Housing Committee. Uh, very quickly, uh, with respect to a legislative package, I met with the, I was part of the Policy Committee in the House of Representatives, which puts together the package for the House majority. And fortunately, uh, the admission interlock, uh, as you know, uh, it was signed by the governor. Uh, it doesn't actually take effect until 2010 because we've had a lot of administration and implementation issues to deal with. Uh, the task force has met uh, all summer and we have our final recommendations now and it will be crafted into a bill and will be uh, introduced in the House Majority Package along with other economic recovery um, items that we're looking at right now. Uh, one other thing that I want to report is this Saturday, December the 6th, we do have our Aloha Item Day here at Kapolei High School from 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. I encourage members of the community, I know this will come out late, but if you could please come and donate. Basically, we take everything under the sun with respect to recycling, we turn all of that money over, it goes to Kapolei High School for a good cause. Everything from scrap metal to refrigerators to tires to cooking oil, uh, batteries, computers, we basically take everything. This is a wonderful opportunity for the community to take that trash and turn it into cash. Okay, um, one final thing is that um, Senator Gabbard had mentioned the four-way stop in Kaleva and the short term that uh, we've been working on with respect to the officers there. One of the long-term things that we are looking at in addition to uh, is a roundabout in that area at that four-way stop. The traffic light creates more traffic as evidenced by the traffic light over on Kamaha and Fort Barrett. Everybody knows it's dark back of the traffic on Fort Barrett now. Traffic lights are not necessarily the solution, and so we've been looking at it for uh, a, a roundabout, but again, it's, it's going to cost a lot of money, we don't have that money. And so we're looking at the feds to get some of that money to help us find that for that uh, roundabout. And so the Department of Transportation is currently doing a study to see if we can qualify for federal funding, and we will continue to work with the Department of Transportation so we can alleviate some of the traffic. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Happy holidays. Representative Moana, thanks for waiting. You're last, but you are not least. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I have some brochures to share with the board members and extra copies on the table there. It contains information for families to deter underage drinking. Earlier this year, I had held a community meeting where we had martial arts um, athletes in the Illinois and Cooper County provided inspiration to you in attendance and there are a few extra brochures, especially during this time when there's a, a lot of alcohol flowing through the In October, state legislators partnered with our friends at AARP and our Honolulu Police Department <coughs> to promote driver and pedestrian safety. Sign waiting stations were created at key intersections along the Franklin Highway Corridor. And I also have booklets to share with the board members, along with a reflective wristband, um, helpful during early morning and evening times. Um, 
Also, thanks to Ryan Brown from the ADRP who helped me this time. A bodybuilding competition has taken place um, November 1st, where we had youth from Nantakuli and Wainai High Schools. John Lee and Joan Campus had uh, provided free training and um, nutrition and physical fitness training. And at the end of the uh, series of training sessions, they have actually entered a professional competition and have won one student from Wine and one from Nanakuri. Uh, with that interest, we had more interest from the Kahue and Kosui areas, and I'll continue to work with John Lee say, to promote uh, physical fitness and nutrition in our schools. I'm pleased to announce my appointment to the State House Committees on Public Safety, Labor, Finance, and I'm also the Vice Chair to Transportation. I was also appointed to the Oahu Metropolitan Planning Organization's Legislative Policy Committee. And what better time to discuss the traffic rules that they're experiencing along the Farrington Highway corridor. And I'm happy to see that my request to have electronic signage along with contact telephone numbers created along that corridor near so special thanks to Hawaii Electric, Lori Liu, and Moani Wright Panos for their assistance. Um, Moani's from the Board of Water And also this week, I was informed of my election to the National Conference of State Legislators, the Native American Native Alaskan Native Hawaiian Caucus as the treasurer. I'm also co-chair of the Economic Development Committee, uh, being that there are many similarities with the rural areas that I represent. It's just be fitting for me to help to represent our state in this capacity. Um, one of the issues that I will be working on this session is to have a blinking light. Uh, if you're heading towards town, it will be right before the Ottawa Street um, to deter the traffic accidents that are taking place. Currently, there are lights on every intersection in both directions except for that one area. And, um, I don't think it's any coincidence that so that's where all of our fatalities are taking place at the moment. I'll be working hard in working with the Department of Transportation to get involved. Opening session is taking place on January 21st. It's open to the public. However, I'd like to advise early arrival for parking and a seat should you wish to attend the opening sessions. But before I leave, I'd just like to wish um, our board as well as our community a very um, happy holiday season and all the best for our very bright year. Okay. Thank you very much, Representative Moana. Folks, we have come to the end. We are expired. The pumpkin's expired. This meeting is adjourned. Happy holidays. Drive safe.